another vlog talking about the Tuono again because I love my Tuono you love my Tuono or another Tuono it's all good we love motorcycles yes we do we love motorcycles how about you still never gets old and one of the many reasons we love motorcycles <laughs> Hi, I'm Chad and welcome to Virtual Reality. I like to start my vlogs in Virtual Reality because it is a place where we can go fast. So without further ado, let us go fast. Back to reality. So in today's video, I hope to show you that I am not so infatuated with the Tawano that I still can't be objective on its shortcomings. So I am going to share a list of the things that I dislike and can't stand about my Aprilia Tuono V4 factory. You guys know I absolutely love my Tuono factory. I love the Tuono platform and I really don't have many bad things to say about it. In fact, I had to sit for a half an hour with a pen and paper just to write down these three things. And I tried to think of more and I just really couldn't. And all these things are a little bit nitpicky. They're obviously, obviously not deal breakers by any stretch of the imagination. And of course, I could say things like, oh, I wish the 210 V4 had slide control like the R1, or oh, I wish it had more horsepower like the Street Fighter V4. But this isn't a video to compare it against other bikes. This is a video just picking up on some of the little nuances and things that I think Aprilia overlooked a little bit or just didn't really consider in the way that I wish they had, specifically when designing this bike. Another thing too with like maintenance, I understand this engine is very hard to work on if you're doing anything more than like an oil coolant flush, specifically if you're getting into a valve job, just because of the way it's packed in the frame. But I assume they designed the bike that way because they wanted the exact handling characteristics that that design would produce. So I'm not going to hold that against Aprilia. So these are all things that I think Aprilia could have just put a tiny little bit more effort or thought into that would have improved the bike that little bit more. Needless to say, you guys know I absolutely love this bike and am just smitten with it. So these are easy compromises to live with, but there are things that do irk me just a tiny little bit, specifically item number one, the service light. So the service light, in case you're unfamiliar with the dash on the 2017 to 2020 to 10 V4 and RS V4, is this tiny little wrench icon that's down in the bottom right hand corner and that illuminates every 6,250 miles to let you know that you need to change your oil and what drives me crazy about this is that you can't reset it yourself and in fact most independent Aprilia shops, or all as far as I'm aware, can't either. The dash has a separate connection from the ECU, and therefore a special kind of connector and tool and software, well there buddy, are required to make connection with it and modify or just reset stuff within it. So if your service light comes on, there's only one way as far as I am aware to turn it off and that is to go to an Aprilia dealer and have them reset it. Now, as you guys know, because I absolutely love this motorcycle and every motorcycle I own, I over maintain them. I usually change my oil at least twice as often as is recommended by the manufacturer. Aprilia recommends 6,250 mile intervals on oil changes. I change mine every 3,000 miles or less. So I'll change it every 3,000 miles if I'm riding road but if the bike sees track time, I will multiply the mileage by 10. So basically, the way that I think about it, every one mile on track dilutes the oil as much as 10 miles on the street. So if I do 100 miles on track and 2,000 miles on the street, it's time to change my oil. And that is the service schedule that I follow. And it really just bothers me that every time that little light comes on, 
I have to go get it reset by a dealer and pay money for that. Like, it literally takes, I, I, I've watched them do it. It takes 10 minutes, if that, to plug in the tool and just reset the service light. It's a very easy thing to do. Now, my local dealer charges me for a half an hour of labor. It's about 75 bucks to reset the service light, which I thought was absurd until I went looking on the Aprilia forums and see what other dealers do. In some cases, a dealer won't even reset the light at all unless they perform service on the bike. So that means you gotta get your oil changed to the tune of like $200 or more to just get your service light turned off. And I just think that's insane. In the older 210, 2016 and older, you could reset the service light in the dash on your own. Easy thing to do. But when they went to the TFT dash on the 2017 and newer 210s, they changed that and it sucks. I've only had to do this twice. I had to do it once on my 210 RR and then just recently on this bike. And I mean, now that I understand how much of a pain it can be for other people, I'm really glad it's not as painful for me. But still like, that's annoying. I understand that Aprilia wants to make sure its bikes get maintained and everything like that, but just kind of like forcing people to go to a dealership is just kind of a crappy way of doing that if you ask me. So that's by and far my number one gripe and the thing that I dislike the most about this bike. Now the next thing that disappoints me a bit with it is the fact that the rear brake pedal is not adjustable. On my Daytona 675R, for example, or even on my WR250X Supermoto, you can adjust the angle of the rear brake simply by adjusting, a, there's a little lock nut on a threaded rod that runs into the master cylinder. And all you need to do is undo the lock nut and then thread the pin that mounts to the lever up further, further up the rod and that brings the angle down. I'm a very big person, much bigger than this bike is designed for. I stand six foot three and I have a size 14 shoe. And I basically had to tuck my foot up as high as I could to get it onto the rear brake. Now, I removed the master cylinder and the rear set and everything in an attempt to make sure that there was no way I could adjust it. Sure enough, I couldn't figure out a way. So if you know how, Drop a comment below, let me know, but it doesn't look adjustable to me. So I bought from AF1 Racing this little toe peg extender thing. So it drops the peg about an inch. And that drop of it about an inch helps, but the actual lever on the pedal itself, or the arm, whatever you want to call it, still kind of gets in the way sometimes when I'm going to put my foot on. You have to align your foot in just the right way to make sure it touches the peg. That's a little annoying. It just kind of shocks me that a 2009 Supermoto with a little 250 engine would have an adjustable rear brake when this pure pedigree Italian hyper naked bike does not. I think you can fix it with rear sets, but still nonetheless would have been nice from the factory. So I guess it's worth mentioning for the sake of the argument that the toe peg on the rear brake is slightly adjustable. It's eccentric, so there's a little pinch bolt that you can loosen up and then you can kind of rotate it, but it gives you like a total of two millimeters of adjustment, which someone like me, not cutting it. Anyways, let's move on to the third thing, which is the flimsiness of some of the switches and buttons on the left-hand switch panel. Now, if you're a Tuono V4 or RSV4 owner with a 2017 or newer bike, I'm sure you've noticed that these switches at first are a little difficult to use just because it's very easy to press with pressure a little bit in a different direction than you want to, and that pushes the switch the other way, such as with canceling the turn signals, which I'm glad they thought this through because you can just click it back again in the direction that you had clicked it to set the indicator and that'll cancel it too. But like with the cruise control, for example, or the multifunctional switch, if you have it set for cruise control, it can be challenging to hold your thumb down in the right spot, especially going over bumps to get it to activate. Up and down isn't really an issue, it's just turning it on unless you're at a stop or on a very smooth road. And then of course there is the joystick, which is 
very difficult to use if you have gloves on. Now once you're moving, the joystick is disabled. It doesn't do anything if you do click it. But if you're stopped at a light and want to adjust the setting or change something in the menu real quick, if you're using the joystick, it can be challenging. Gloves make it easy to overpress in another direction, and especially when you're trying to click the joystick in to select something, it can be challenging. So it's something you can get used to, but still something that I wish that Aprilia had put a little more thought and effort into. Just changing the weight of these switches a little bit would have made a world of a difference in their use and just made them feel a little bit more top notch. Other than that, the bike is actually very well put together in my opinion, especially considering it's a little niche Italian brand, a little tiny factory out in Italy producing these glorious machines. But I mean, these are just some of the nuance that come with owning a low production exotic Italian motorcycle. And that's all I got for you. Like I said, it took me quite some time to actually sit down and come up with a list of things I didn't like about this bike just because it is such an amazing motorcycle in my opinion. Needless to say, I absolutely love this bike. Couldn't possibly imagine my motorcycling life without it now. And I'm very happy with it overall. So that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a gentle little click of the like button. Helps me out tremendously. Gets my videos recommended and I'd really love to share more Aprilia Tuono V4 content and information with the world. I hope this can give you some idea of what to expect if you're going and looking at one of these bikes for the first time. Definitely test ride it. The flimsy switches will be at the back of your mind once you start the engine to get rolling. But also greatly appreciate it if you subscribed and turned those notifications on if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. I'm posting about twice a week at the moment, so that may increase, we'll see. Just depends on how much time I have, but I really love making these videos for you guys and appreciate you watching them and uh, showing me some love and support. So I hope to catch you in the next one, and until then, I bid you adieu. Later.